Hello everyone! On today's videos I'm gonna answer, actually we are gonna answer all of the uh, questions related to uh, dog traveling and most uh, specifically OD traveling. <laughs> um, I've asked uh, you to ask us uh, any questions concerning Odie and concerning traveling with dogs on uh, Instagram and Facebook and so I'm gonna go through uh, and uh, yeah just answer them. I uh, You did ask quite a few so please don't be offended if we don't answer your specific questions I'm just gonna pick up the ones that most frequently uh, came up. All right let's do it. Okay, one of the questions that we get asked very often is how old is Odie and what kind of breed is he? He is gonna be 11 next month actually and he's supposed to be a Labradoodle, so a cross between a Poodle and a Labrador. However, the Labradoodles that I've seen, they have like more of a Poodle face and less of a Lab face, so I'm not, I don't know, he has weird, weird genes, he's more like a Lab kind of yeah, look. Uh, then Kato Chan asks, do you leave Odie in the van if you can go places, uh, example shops and even if it's hot? And then again, have you ever left Odie by himself in the van? I'm wondering if there are things you want to do and you can't take him with you. Okay, so this question is like probably the most popular one and so how it works is that Odie can stay in the van uh, for up to, I'd say, three hours if he's tired and if it's not warm. So, for example, right now it's 10 degrees, he will be fine staying in the van. I know that he's going to sleep when I come back. However, I don't feel comfortable leaving him in the van and then going far from him. So, for example, if I need to go to, I don't know, for a swim, and that will take me at least about an hour, then I want to park as close to the swimming pool as I can. I can't leave him and then go, you know, away from like a mile or two miles. It makes me very, very uncomfortable. So the only times I leave him in the van is when it's not warm and I know that I'm close by and I know that he'll be fine and just tired sleeping in the van. If it is warm and uh, I need to go somewhere, for example, a shop, um, it doesn't happen often, but if it is warm, I will leave him outside the shop with a bowl of water and usually I make sure or I try to choose shops that have like mirrors so that if I'm inside the shop I can check on him outside. Uh, but yeah, that has happened last year a few times, this year not as much because we've traveled to colder places uh, in summer and then we're gonna go to uh, warmer places in winter so that we avoid that kind of heat that really really worries me it makes just things a lot more difficult but yeah Odie is fine to just stay in the van for a few hours but I usually don't leave him more than an hour like I don't yeah I don't do anything that requires me to stay you know away from him that long uh, there has been of, of course a few exceptions but usually I don't leave him more than an hour in the van and uh, da, 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 da. things like people often ask me about like oh what about restaurant where you want to go to the restaurant or, like we want to go to museums or concerts like I don't do any of those things I only leave him in the van when I have to like to have a shower to go in a grocery shop anything that is like superfluous and like a museum and does not they don't allow dogs in then I won't go like I won't yeah, I just don't go. I don't even think about going to a museum and leaving Odie in the van, really. Unless it's something really, really special, but I don't think it's happened yet. Yeah. Atla asks, do you find it difficult storing dog food for your travels and does Odie have pet insurance? Uh, good questions. So, uh, dog food for my travels. Yes, as you know, the van is very small. By the way, I'm not in the van. I forgot to say. <laughs> as you might have noticed, I'm not in the van. If you follow my Instagram stories, you'll know that I'm moving right now. So I had the option of whether staying in the van or upgrading to a bigger caravan. And I've upgraded to the bigger caravan. And I'm so glad I had like a big bed. I can stretch in the morning, which is just amazing, honestly. It's going to be hard to go back in the van. Although I do miss it because it's like... It's my cozy little house, but yeah, I'm woofing and that's why I'm not in the van. So, okay, yes, the van is small, so 
I do tend not to buy big, big, big bags like of food. I usually buy five kilos of food. Um, beforehand, I was being sent food by this company called Benivo, which does vegan food. And I really liked it and it worked well, but the bags are humongous, uh, like 30 kilos. And honestly, it was a struggle to find a place for the bag. And so now I just prefer buying smaller bags just at the shop. And yeah, I think I need to find a better solution for this. Uh, but yes, yeah, space is an issue in the van. And no, he doesn't have pet insurance. But actually, if you do know any pet insurance that insures uh, older dogs, then please do let me know because I've contacted so many pet insurances and they stopped. They stopped insuring dogs after eight years old or something, or even younger, because I remember when I got him, he was seven or eight, and already I couldn't find anybody that would insure him. So please, if you know of any insurance that would uh, cover him, then do let me know. Uh, uh, that aside, if you do have a dog, or if you're planning to get a dog, you always need to have, you know that you need to be prepared for any vet bills like it comes with the package you can't get a dog and expect it not to cost you anything so you should always be prepared for like emergencies and that kind of stuff even if you are insured uh okay another question that gets asked a few times so yyhsas asks i always wonder how you manage when he gets wet i know that dogs don't always smell the best when they're wet indeed they don't uh, he is a big dog and he does smell when he's wet but the thing with the van especially in winter is that <laughs> I do try to dry him out but then the towel is drying out and the towel takes probably three times as long as Odie drying out so I usually just leave him you know drying until he dries and that's it I'd rather that than having a wet towel around for ages and then that smells so yeah I usually kind of clean his uh, paws and then that's it really um, it's not the best I mean if you if you are traveling in a van especially of a, on a small van like a kangoo you've got to be prepared it's not always gonna be smelling like roses sometimes you, it's gonna be a mess and it's gonna be muddy everywhere and your dog might smell of wet dog you know you just have to accept it hopefully the day after the sun is gonna shine and you can clean a little bit but yeah I don't really have a solution for the problem of a wet dog uh, okay Gellert64 asks, has Odie ever been sick on your travels? Very good question. Um, let me think. <laughs> e not kind of... So, we have been to the vets outside of the UK. Uh, he's never been sick, like seriously ill. But we visited um, the vet in Italy last year because I was worried about his back legs because he was... He, I could see he was in pain and uh, the vet checked his heart as well and he found that, uh, well she found that the heart was a bit uh, weak probably because of the heat so you know things like that like checkups at the vets yes I've gone and also a few months ago he was beaten by a dog so of course we had to visit the vet to check if he needed stitches and get antibiotics so things like that but he's never been seriously ill and touch wood he never will um, Evie Mulder asks would you have started living in your van on your own if you didn't have a dog? This is a brilliant question because <laughs> I was thinking about that actually a few weeks ago and the answer to that is no. I The main reason why I've started traveling in the van is just because I thought it would be the most practical way to bring uh, Odie with me and uh, if it wasn't for him I probably would have chosen either bike or motorbike um, so yeah it's only because of him that i'm traveling for a van and i'm so grateful because i love it so thank you Odie. murray 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 lenton asks uh does Odie ever bark in the middle of the night and freak you out best wishes very good question um no he doesn't and i'm so <laughs> lucky honestly i'm the luckiest dog owner ever because Odie is just amazing he doesn't ever bark Unless people knock or like bump in the van, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, but for example, if 
there are people outside and there's noise or like a car next to us they open and close the door he won't bark he's like it's as if he knows what constitutes a threat the video stopped so what i was saying yes that it's uh, as if odi knows what constitutes a threat and what doesn't and he doesn't bark in the middle of the night unless he feels i i think he feels there's something wrong and that has happened maybe once so no i'm really really lucky i know that if you had a barky dog or a dog that's like <laughs> always a bit hyper that could be an issue if you're trying to be stealthy in the in the in the van and then a dog barks people would either know that there's somebody in the van either get worried that there's a dog in the van and they don't know you know if the dog is okay if he's alone and stuff so yeah i'm i'm lucky thank you Oli, for being so good Elena TDH asks, Hi Marina and Odi, what do you find the best thing about traveling with Odi? Uh, you know that saying that says, home is where your heart is? It's so cheesy, but it's true. Like, whenever I s I'm with Odi, I feel like I'm at home. And we're like a partnership, like car partner in crime. And I don't know, it's a. Uh, I, f I find it very comforting, I guess, having uh, him around and it's like grounding and yeah it keeps it keeps me happy so it's a lot of a lot of good stuff comes from it OCRMAG asks what is his favorite snack is in in a relationship <laughs> well he's not actually very good with ladies you know he gets very awkward when he likes a girl a, a dog girl uh, he just barks <laughs> he doesn't know how to approach them he just stands there and barks and the ladies usually get annoyed and go away so no he's not very good uh, with the ladies so and uh, ooh, uh, what is his favorite snack he likes anything meaty and yeah cheese that kind of stuff which again I don't usually have in the van okay another question that comes up quite a lot is whether I feel safer from having Odi and I never look at it that way I mean I never got him because I wanted to be safe or anything like that and honestly I mean look at him does it look like an aggressive dog I don't think so so maybe I don't know the only way I think that it could help like help improve my security is for example if somebody was trying to break in in the van and he barked and the person hadn't seen his face then maybe they would be like oh there's a dog but if you saw him then you'd be like, oh, he's not gonna, he's not gonna do anything. That said, he is quite jealous and he is quite intuitive, and he does bark at people he doesn't like, which usually are like dodgy-looking, suspicious people. So maybe that 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 helps. But I, as I said, I never thought about it that way. Um, when he's not around, I don't feel unsafer. I just feel bored, and I'm like, where is Odi? And I wish he was here so I could throw like the ball at him and stuff. MC Leblanc 68 asks, would you consider getting a, sec a second dog or would three be a cramped crowd in the van? I have considered getting a third dog, but it, it just wouldn't be possible in the kangoo is just too small. And I'm not sure how he would deal because he's just so spoiled and he's get he gets all of my attention and yeah, I don't know how he would react to having another pup, but if I was to get a bigger van, which I think is going to happen next year, I'm saving for it, I'm planning for it, so hopefully it will, uh, I might think about it. Okay, Martina asks, my question, where does Odi come from? Is he a rescue dog from a shelter? Uh, yes, he is a rescue dog from a shelter, so I'll make it very short, but basically I had a dog before him called Vega. She was my dog since I was maybe 10 and I brought her from Italy to England and unfortunately she died um, and I was very sad I didn't want to get a dog because I knew I wanted to travel and you know dogs and traveling don't always go on hand on hand or at least that's what I thought at the time and so to make myself feel a bit better I used to visit the local shelter to visit to walk the dogs on a Sunday and so one day I went with my sister and we walked one dog and then when we went back to the kennel I saw his picture on like a board and I was like oh my gosh can we walk him just to see him just like he looks adorable I wasn't planning to get a dog and then I saw him and my, my sister still like makes jokes that it was like um, 
a lightning bolt for me when I saw him I was like falling in love straight away and I was like oh my god I have to bring this pup home and I fought really hard to bring him home because the lady at the kennel didn't particularly like me I'm not, I'm not sure why but it took me two to three weeks to uh, bring him home and uh, yeah he was seven or eight I can't remember I think eight or seven seven and a half uh, when I got him Okay, another question that pops up quite often is where does Odi stay when I'm driving? Is he safe? Uh, so, I don't think I'll be able to show you, but maybe on the, ne the next vlog I'll, I'll show you the, the space. But basically between the kitchen and the passenger seat, there is a space where his bed fits exactly. By the way, did you notice that I'm uh, sitting on his bed and he's sitting on my pillow? Like, what, what happened here? Anyhow, yes, so the bed sits between the kitchen and the drive, the passenger um, seat, which means that if I break, he will end up on the passenger seat and not on the windscreen, which is nice, and uh, if I, yeah, if I speed up, he will, like, uh, push on the kitchen, so... Yeah, he's uh, safe there, and that's why he's not allowed in my bed during daytime. Because if I if he goes in my bed and he gets the habit of that, and then I'm driving around and I forget that he's on the bed, then if I break and he's on the bed, he's gonna end up on my windscreen. So I'm like paranoid that he's on his bed when I'm driving. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have a dog harness or like a belt or anything like that. He, in my opinion he is quite safe I would never risk it um, I know that in some countries I mean I don't actually don't quote me on this but some countries you're actually supposed to have like separators from the driving uh, compartment to the back uh, and I might think about getting you know those iron bars um, fitted in but I don't know how it's gonna work I need to do more research on that so Cohen asks, um, are there any restrictions for traveling with a dog anywhere throughout Europe uh, that you know of, like having to be put in quarantine or maybe even a mandatory safety harness while traveling? Going back to the mm, earlier question. Uh, right, it's, uh, right to, to make it short, in Europe, as long as you have a dog passport and um, you check before you enter that country which vaccinations are required then you should be fine you shouldn't need quarantine if for example you get into the uk and your rabies vaccination is out of date or you don't have one then of course they will have to put your dog in quarantine but as long as you comply with their regulations which you can check on the government site or on the how is it called pet travel pets pet Trolling with pets site. I'll leave the link on the description box. Uh, yeah, you can check there which vaccinations are uh, compulsory and uh, what are the documents that you need. And if you make sure that you comply to all those rules, then at borders you shouldn't have any issues. I never had any issues because I do my research beforehand. Um, for example, in the UK, when you come back, uh, other than having your rabies vaccination that's uh, valid and your passport, ouch, you also need to uh, deworm your dog between. 24 to 72 hours before you enter the UK so you have to make sure that you visit the uh, vet uh, on your way back to the UK and that you book something in advance I have done a full video on and a blog post actually um, on how to bring a dog into the UK so you can check that out although don't only check that you should also do your research I only wrote and spoke from my experience so I don't want to be responsible for any of you guys getting stuck Okay, there is so many other questions on uh, Instagram because I had put a story and I've asked you to ask the questions to Odi there but I don't want this video to be an hour long and I think that a lot of the questions kind of repeat themselves so again, I'm sorry if I'm not answering your question um, we might do another uh, Q&A another time and Odi's like totally dead on this pillow do you like it? huh, Bobby boy? do you like it? um... How do I end up this video? I'm just gonna be saying goodbye and I'm gonna show you the donkeys outside because they're super, super, super cute. That's Heather, lady, and that's Jackson, her boy, and they're just adorable. Okay, bye. Bye, YouTube. Bye, donkeys. Bye, bye, bye.